Welcome everyone. Today in this video, we are going to write a program to solve the simultaneous equation using Gauss elimination method. Okay, so to solve the equation using Gauss elimination method, uh, we have to first know something about the 2D array because we are going to use the matrix in Gauss elimination method. Okay, so let me uh, give you some insight about the 2D array. Okay, so let me define something here. Okay, so, so the 2D array consists of the rows and a column. Okay, uh, in the previous video, I have given some information about an array. The array always take certain size. Okay, certain size of the memory location. Okay, so the 2D array will take the double size. Okay, so if we have to define the 2D array, what we can do? We have to define this two field. Okay, first field will contain the maximum number of rows that the array can hold and the second this bracket will contain the maximum number of column that the array can Hold, okay so let me say that the maximum it can hold the number uh, 10 rows and 10 columns now so to take the input from the user we have to use the nested for loop for the first for loop will be for the row and the second for loop will be for the column okay so let me define two looping uh, variables i and j okay so to take the input simply we have to do for i equals to okay let me start from one okay you can start from anything okay one I less than okay now let me say I am going to uh, use 2 by 2 matrix okay so I have to go from 1 to 2 equals to 2 because it will contain the 2 rows and 2 columns okay I plus plus similarly for J equals to 1 J less than equals to 2 J plus plus scanner person D and we, we are going to store in ai and j okay so what will happen is the first this for loop will run okay this one the i for loop will run so initially i will be one and j also will be one okay and it will scan the input for a11 okay and the next loop will be for i equals to one and j equals to two right so it will scan for a1 and 2 okay and then third time it will be i will be 2 and j will be 1 similarly then i will be 2 and j will be 2 okay as you can see a11 a12 a21 a22 is refers to the position in the matrix okay as you know the matrix is written as a11 a12 a21 a22 right so this a11 is equivalent to this a1 in the matrix okay this a12 is equivalent to this a12 in the matrix and so on okay so this is the way how we can take the input for the 2d matrix in the c programming language okay so uh, if you have understand this so let me move forward to the gauss elimination method, okay so here i have already written the codes so let me explain you this code okay so um, i have defined here some variables i j and k will be the looping variables and n is used to store the order of the matrix okay and i have defined here the 2d matrix that can hold the maximum 20 rows and maximum 20 columns okay and i have defined this data type as float because when performing the calculation we can obtain the floating value also okay so i have defined the data type as floating okay this one okay um this variable i will explain it to you later okay so i have printed here a message for entering the order of the matrix okay and i have scanned the order of matrix okay and i have been print another message to enter the elements of the augmented matrix in row wise okay so row wise means first of all we will take the input for the first row and for the second row and third row and so on okay so, so this block of code uh, is to take the input from the user okay so we will take the input for the matrix okay so i have explained like in this okay this i have also here printed some messages okay so that a user can track which number is going to store in which position okay so this a person d person d will tell us about the position okay so let me show you okay from this let me say the order of matrix is 2 for now 
okay so a11 okay for the position a1 is a bit if I give one, then the one will be stored in, in the A11. Okay, so in for A12, let me give two, then it will be stored in the A12, right? And as you can notice here, something that I have gone this part j equals to one to j less than equals to n plus one. Okay, so why? So because in Gauss elimination method, as you know that the number of column is one more than the number of rows. Okay, now here starts our actual calculation part. Okay, so this is our actual calculation part okay so uh, let me explain you something let me define uh, the matrix okay let me say the user input the order of the matrix as three so if we if he or c enters the three as the order of matrix then uh, we will have number of rows three and uh, the number of column will be one time more than the number of rows okay that is four okay so let me say this is the matrix that is input by the user okay so in the Gauss animation what we have to do is we have to convert this matrix into a upper triangular matrix okay so to convert this into a upper triangular matrix what we have to do is we have to make this five this nine and this one to the zero okay we have to convert this three number into zero okay so how we convert this number into zero we convert this the first one this five and nine to zero by using this first rule okay so what we have to do is we have to take the first the ratio right so the ratio will be this divided by this okay to make this number zero and again uh, the ratio for making this number nine zero it will be nine upon one so as you can see here five nine and one okay in this position number of row is greater than the number of column right okay so let me define this equivalent matrix here okay so this is a11 a12 a13 a14 a21 a22 a23 a24 a31 a32 a33 and a34 okay so 5 9 and 1 is in the position a21 a31 and a 3 2 okay so as you can notice here in this position the row number is greater than the column number okay the row number here is 2 and the column number is 1 so the 2 is greater than 1 okay right here also the row number is greater than the column number okay? we have to perform the operation only if the row number is greater than the column number okay and uh, we are going to calculate in the row wise okay first we will do for entire this row calculation okay so i have first here looked the column i have here written first j and not i because we are going to perform the calculation row wise okay first of all we will perform calculation for first row and second row and the third row right so row wise we are performing the calculation so we are first doing the column and we are going up to the end okay and this end is the order of the matrix okay so and the actual calculation begins here right so if the row number the row number is indicated indicated by i and the column number is indicated by j so if the row is greater than the column then we are going to perform this calculation right so the in the in this step so what i have done is i have calculated the ratio okay so the ratio will be what a i z upon a z z right okay so let me give you an example here okay, okay. Uh, let me say if the matrix here is 2 4 5 6 right 5 10 2 so in this step loop will work only in this step okay because this is position a 2 1 what is j equals to 2 and i equals to 1 okay here what j will be equals to 1 and i will be equals to what this is the a to one position of the matrix okay so the ratio c will be equals to okay a i z right so a i z means a to one okay the a to one we have five right so five upon and a z z the a z z will be the position a one one right so a two is situated in a one one position so the ratio will be five by two here right okay now the ratio is defined for performing a calculation in the first 
this entire second loop right we have to use another loop here because we have to go from 5 to this one okay we have to perform the calculation of 5 we have to do 10 2 and 1 okay so that's why i have used another loop here k k loop okay so for the k equals to 1 okay that will start from this and it will go up to n plus 1 that is if the order of math is 3 then the n plus 1 will be 4 it will go up to this one okay and it will perform this calculation a i k will be the value of i here is 2 a 2 initially the value of k here is 1 okay so a to 1 b equals to here it is also a i k so a to 1 minus so c we have calculated as c is 5 by 2 right into a z k okay so a z k the value of z is 1 and the value of k is what 1 right so what we have in a to 1 that is 5 right the a to 1 here is 5 minus 5 upon 2 multiplied by a1 or again in a1 we have 2 okay so if you calculate it then it will be 0 right okay similarly it will calculate for this entire row and again it will loop for j equals to 2 again it will repeat the this entire steps okay okay then this loop will generate the upper triangular matrix okay so after generating upper triangular matrix we have to do backward substitution right so uh, for doing backwards substitution so what i have done is the value of xn will be the a n n plus 1 divided by a n okay so value of x and if the user input n as a 3 then the n will be 3 will be equals to a okay n is 3 4 a 3 4 right divided by a 3 3 so if this is the matrix when this number is converted to 0 okay let me say this will be 0 right after converting into upper triangular matrix this will be 0 okay so if the unknown variables are x y z this first row will represent x second row will represent y and this third row will represent z okay, right so 2z will be equals to 10 and z will be equals to what 10 upon 2 right so in this step that operation will be performed right a34 upon a33 that okay so now after doing this we will get a value of x3 okay but we have to still calculate the value of x1 and x2 okay so we will be using for loop again okay so we will be uh, looping from i equals to n minus 1 why we are going looping from n minus 1 because we have already find a value for x3 Okay. now the remaining value are x2 and x1 okay so this will loop from i equals to 3 minus minus 2 to i less than equals 1 and i minus minus right so i have defined the sum as 0 here okay and i have used another loop okay so for z equals to i plus 1 the i equals to 2 then z here will be what i plus 1 then z here will be 3 right okay and in this step what is happening is sum will be equals to sum okay the initially the value of sum is zero here okay so zero plus a i c right a i the value of i is two and the value of j is three into x c okay x j is what three right so this will be the zero plus a two three okay the value of a two three is what the value of a two three is 7 right to so 7 into and the value of x3 what we have get as 10 by 2 5 right it is 5 okay okay it will be 35 okay and then in this step x i so x i is 2 will be equals to a i the value of i is 2 n plus 1 so n plus 1 is 3 plus 1 what 4 minus the sum is we have obtained as 35 okay and this is divided by a i i so a i i means a 2 2 because the value of i is 2 here as you can see okay so let me take the value from here a 2 4 okay so what is in the a 2 4 a 2 4 here we have 8 right so 8 minus 35 right a minus 8 minus 35 and that will be divided by a 2 2 right so a 2 2 here is a21 a22 that will be divided by 6 okay in this way we find the value of x2 okay 
we are simply solving the equation by replacing the value of z or x squared. So in this way, this loop will again run for i equals to one because the value of i was two. When we do i minus one, then the value here will reach one. Okay. Similarly, in this way, we we will get the value of one. Okay. So in this step, we are printing the solution in the matrix form. Why the matrix form? Because we have to we have to print the value of three variables x one, x two, and x three. So here I have taken a loop from i equals to one to n. Okay, so it will go for x1, x2, x3. Okay, so let me compile and run this. Okay, okay, so let me define the order of material as 3. Okay, now let me give the value as 3, 1, minus 2, 7, okay, 1, minus 3, 4, 15, 2, minus 2, 1, and 2. So the solution here is x1 is 4, x2 is minus 0 0.9, that is uh, nearly equals to 1, and x3 is also nearly equals to 2. Okay, if you want to pin the each steps of the solution, okay, so in this step one, so what we get the matrix, and in the step two, to pin the each and every steps, okay, so we can also do that here, okay. So let me print that in the new line. So print f. Okay, let me define iterations. Okay, for j equals to percent d and i equals to percent d. Okay, this will be j and i. Let me print all in the new line. Okay, and okay. So we have to print the matrix. Okay, so we have to use the nested for loop. Okay, let me define another variable x equals to one. Okay, nested equals to n x plus plus similarly for int y equals to 1 y less than equals to n plus 1 okay we have four four n plus 1 columns y plus plus okay so we have to print f percentage f sorry not d f we are using floating um, variables okay so person that will be a i and z okay so let me give a vertical tab here so that you can obtain it in the matrix form okay so print f slash n okay this will print in the matrix uh, form okay so let me try this again so let me, uh, let me give this the same previous values okay 3 1 minus 2 7 1 minus 3 4 15 2 minus 2 1 2 okay see we have gotten each step okay for j equals to 1 i equals 1 here uh, the value of i and z are equal so the matrix is Okay, there is I think there is something mistake here. Let me see what let me figure it out. Okay. Okay, I have found my mistake. Uh, actually this will be X and Y. I was um, because we are looping here X and Y, right? Okay, so I'm sorry for that. Then let me run this and see one more time. Our matrix is three. Okay. So three one minus two seven one. So I think I have made it okay. So for j equals to one and i equals to one, the value of i and z is equal. So we haven't done here anything, right? So uh, as you remember, our operation for only if i is greater than j, right? Here the value of i is greater than j, as you can see, i equals two and j equals to one, right? So here the calculation has begun, right? So it is here zero, right? And this is minus three point three three after performing the calculation, right? So in this Okay. you can track all the steps also okay so that's it if you like this video please do like share and subscribe